Hello. Thank you for stopping in. We're going to do a little bit of uh, some volleyball warehouse talk here. Uh, not really volleyball stuff, but we're going to be talking about, as the title showed, the F2100 ink costs. And you see that low inks popping up there, that evil little indicator. Um, so just to review on the F2100, currently uh cymk or C, yeah, cymk each cartridge is running around 217 us dollars um it's not an outrageous price um these cartridges actually last for a very long time and the size of the cartridges we're talking about are the let me make sure i have the right ones here 600 milliliters i believe it is yeah, the 600 milli milliliters, the plastic, white plastic cases. Um, so, I mean, they, they go up in price in different ranges, but around there, 217 is, I think, is a good deal. Unless you're buying second-hand inks from somebody, which I would not recommend with an Epson uh, machine. Uh, you do not want to cause any issues with your printhead. But the issue with the F2100 is... If you're accustomed to see, as soon as you see that low ink uh, indicator light and you pop out that cartridge and you feel it, it's like, okay, it's, it's kind of lightweight. It doesn't, doesn't feel heavy like it originally does. Uh, 600 milliliters is pretty decently heavy. I believe it's around, I'm not sure what the exact weight is of it. Uh, I can pull out a, a good cartridge and let you know, but um, the goal is to use the cartridges as long as possible before you change out. If you sit there and as soon as you see that low indicator light and you pop that cartridge out, I can guarantee you, you are wasting at least 50 to 100 prints. Wasted, just waste it away. Um, and when you're talking about the white ink cartridges costing $230 a piece and you need two, that's, a very expensive commodity to be wasting uh, ink. Uh, to give you an example, let me let you, here, here's an empty case right now. And I have some running on it that we'll discuss here in a second. Sorry about that. So this is the normal Epson white ink. And I have two of them side by side. Um, when I got the indicator light for the low ink, this cartridge, weighed and i took this out and i weighed it on a dynamo uh ounce so i set it down zeroed it out set the cartridge on top and i weighed it uh upon weighing this cartridge when i got the low ink indicator light there was it was still weighing around 13.5 ounces and not around it weighed 13.5 ounces um to Take in consideration, I took one of these, one of these apart a couple of weeks ago because I was really curious of exactly what was inside and how much ink was left when I changed out the uh, cartridges. When I did the change out, I weighed just the plastic. The plastic case itself, without any guts inside. I took out, there's like a little, uh, if you open up the case, there's a bag. The bag carries the fluid. Um, so the case, maybe this little metal tab here, a sticker. The case alone weighed 6.2 ounces. The bag, empty, no fluids, maybe a couple of drops here and there, nothing, nothing of consequential, weighed 0.9 ounces. So on my bags, if you see in the bottom corner here, I put 7.5 ounces because I want to give myself a little leeway. I don't want to suck air out of these cartridges and have a gap inside the line because now and then I got to do a bunch of cleanings in between and that's a, just a waste of time. So the lowest I want to go, truthfully, I would probably not go lower than seven. If you want a safety buffer, seven ounces. If you take this out and you weigh it and it says eight ounces, you have a whole ounce of liquid still left into this case and that's a lot. And then I'll show you here in a second why I say that's a lot. So originally this one was 13.5 ounces. 
after I weighed this one, 13.5 ounces, I ended up printing five prints and I was doing a print with a very, very heavy white. It had a white, it was a, I, I can't say the word on camera, but it was a FU cancer t-shirt. It was a, um, I was donating the shirts for somebody who had cancer and we're trying to raise money. So it had white lines, two white, two white lines across the chest um, the FU was in white. There was a red logo, but the majority of it was a white with a white underbase. And any of you who use Garment Creator knows if you use Garment Creator, you're going to have a heavier white underbase than most applications. I have a, actually a, uh, another program I use. Um, uh, and if you want to know more about it, uh, drop me a message, DM me. Uh, get a hold of me at volleyball.warehouse at gmail.com and I'll give you a, a better software. It costs a little bit more money up front, um, but the software lays down a whole lot less ink on the back end, especially if you're doing DTF prints. So you're not wasting all of that extra white where you don't need to. So just getting back to it. So when I weighed this thing, I did 13.5 ounces. I printed five more shirts or five more DTF prints. So I was printing onto a DTF sheet and I did five more prints and I weighed it. And I was at, go down here, I was at 13.3 ounces. Oh, I take that back. Okay, so when I did the five prints, I weighed it, I was at 13.5. I did an additional 10 prints and I was at 13.3. Then I did another 10, and then I ended up being down to 12.9. Um, the system did a cleaning, a self-cleaning, and that brought me down to 12.1 after that. Um, a couple of days later, um, I weighed this, the system and I was at 11.6. I did a cleaning. It came back down to 11.3. Um, and now I, just so you know, is I leave my uh, Epson F2100 on all the time. I never shut it off. Um, basically, the screen will go into sleep mode. The machine's still on. It'll still cycle the inks. But it's not cleaning off hours. Um, when I... If I do have to reboot the machine, I actually have the cleaning, uh, request cleaning cycle upon reboot turned off. If you have it on, you're wasting your time. My machine will stay off for, if I'm not using it three or four days, if I'm busy doing something else, doing some sublimation or something, I don't sit there and run daily cleaning checks, prints, whatever. I will come back whenever I get time to use it. And there was a period of time where I took a vacation. I was gone for three weeks and I came back. And it was fine. Um, it's all depending on what your climate is and where you store your machine. But do not turn off your machine. Leave it on. If you need to get a UPS, if you're scared of power surges or whatever, get a UPS. But don't ever turn the machine off. Turn off the cleaning cycling, the cleaning cycle to the system. Um, that's guaranteed to save you some money. And then when you do go back to, you need to use it to print, then go ahead and do a cleaning set it on medium and do all the colors afterwards print out the bar graph onto a the, the platen and it should be fine if you do see a couple little dashes here and there run another medium cleaning on just a more than likely it's just a white and then it'll be fine after that i've never had a problem after that and like i said i never turn my machine off um so going on from this i did another 10 prints and i weighed this cartridge and it was 11.0. Um, I did another 20 prints. And now I'm at 9.9. .9. And then I did another 20 prints. And now I'm at 8.6 ounces. So I still, if I say, if I'm going to hold this down to a 7.5 ounce, I'm going to keep it that long. I still have a whole ounce left in here. And it's extremely light. I mean, if I was holding this, I would be like, okay, no, I need to replace it but there's a whole ounce left in here. And if we were talking about a whole ounce, that's at least another 20 prints. Sorry, I keep bouncing 
microphone. And the same thing with the, on this one. I started at, uh, when I weighed it, I did five prints, it ended up being 13.7 when I first uh, weighed it. And then it was, uh, did another 10, it was 13.5. I did a cleaning, it was 13.1. Uh, I did another 10 prints and then the machine did a cleaning, it was 12.4. Sorry, a couple of days later, and this is recent. This is uh, August third. I waited. I did. I was, I was doing a late night job, and it was like three p.m. And it was at eleven point eight. After cleaning, it was eleven point five. Um, I did ten prints. All the way down here, it was eleven point one. And then, if you look on the back, I did another 10, 20 prints. I was at ten point one. Typically, these cartridges usually stay in their balance. Once in a while, they'll be off a little bit, but that could be uh, anything in the, uh, just because I did an extra flush or something. Uh, then I did another 20 prints and that was, I'm down to 8.8. .8. So both cartridges, I'm 8.8 .8 and 8.6. So I'm not gonna fret on a 0.3 difference between the two settings, cartridges. So in total, if you add all these up, so that's 20, 40, when I first started printing this 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 75 plus prints I did. I'm continuing to do with these cartridges that are still indicating low ink. So lesson learned, do not just replace your cartridges. Get an ounce scale for your cartridges ahead of time. Put the max weight on it on each cartridge and put the date you, uh, you weigh them. After a while, you're doing prints, get in the habit of weighing it, get an idea of what you're using. You can even compare it to garment creator and what your ink costs are to see whether, okay, am I actually equaling out? Cause that back end white um, layer, if you're doing DTF will cost you. If you're just doing printing on white shirts and you're just throwing the shirt on the, uh, the platen and printing, you're gonna save a lot of money cause you're not using the white. Uh, but nowadays, I've been doing more DTF than anything. The Epson F2100 is superb for doing DTF. This is a DTF print. It is the softest print. It is the most stretchable print using, um, if you wanna know what kind of powder I'm using, drop me a message. I'm not gonna give a free advertising away to anybody, but let me know and I'll get with you and we'll discuss what you're doing, how you're doing it and what I'm using, what you're using. But the, guy, the goal is not to waste your money. If you're just throwing these cartridges out as soon as the machine says, hey, I need this done, uh, we, you're just burning money out of your pocket. Because let me tell you, that's quite a few prints getting done. If you actually are charging a decent amount per print, that's a lot of money out of your pocket and you're not throwing it away. Um, side note, the, now that one issue I have with the Epson F2100s are the consumables. And we're not talking about the ink. We're talking about the print head cleaning. Um, the reason I turned, one of the reasons I turned off just on power on, power off is the print head because of what you're using up on the print head cleaning uh, equipment. There's a little box in there that has a roller. That's what cleans your print head. If you're letting the machine run cleaning jobs upon power ups, power downs, whatever you're doing, you're gonna go through that consumable very quickly. And that runs around $118 right now. Um, I actually have a call into Epson right now, asking them for a firmware fix to stop the automatic cleaning while you're doing a print job that runs, I think it's like every six hours. It'll just automatically, as you're, you're trying to get down a job and all of a sudden you have seven minutes or nine minutes where it wants to do a cleaning. Why? There is no reason for the machine to do a cleaning. If I'm doing a print job right now, I have ink flowing through the system. What are you cleaning? <laughs> it makes no sense. And there's no way to say, hey, stop. I'm doing a print job. Don't do this right now. It's, you just gotta wait for the timer to go down. And I'm not talking about the little 45 second goes, it just cycles to check your ink levels and tell you what your ink levels are at that current time. That's a, that's just, that's fine. But the seven to nine minute cleaning cycle that it forces you to do, that needs to be adjusted. I get it why there it's there. It's so Epson makes, continues to make money on the back end, 
by you having to buy the head cleaning units, but it doesn't need to be done that often. I've been in the printer business on my back end job for 20 plus years. Uh, there's a lot of tricks in the trade for companies to make. Obviously, they don't make money off the machines long term. They make the money off of the inks and the consumables. Luckily, with the Epson 2100, we have very few print head issues unless you ram something into the print head and it gets out of alignment or something. The Epson F2100s do not have a consumable print head. Uh, there's other brands out there that literally, as you're using the print head and you're printing, the head is wearing down. That makes no sense to me whatsoever. So Epson on that part is one of the prestigious companies I, I rather work with. My image quality, you have to fine tune your machine, color aspects and stuff, but once you get dialed in, um, it's probably one of the better DTF printers out there. Um, and the, I'm sorry, DTG, DTF printers out there. And it's only been recent that uh, the DTF has been pushing forwards. And I thank a couple of companies out there that I know I've thanked them in the past that expanded out and did all the testing before they promoted the uh, DTF sheets. And I do uh, cold transfers. I do hot peel transfers. Um, I've done super color. I think my prints are a little bit better than super color. I've used them in the past where I've not wanted to waste my ink and I had the time to send out and the cost difference was minor in comparison. So I would send out and say, okay, yeah, just send me a bunch of small transfers because I got to put something on the shoulder or something and I'm not going to waste my time doing it. But truthfully, long term, it's a lot co more cost effective to do it in house. So. Uh, we can discuss that more later. I'll go through what I have and my equipment set up when I get a chance. But I just wanted to touch base with you guys about do, do not waste your money arbitrarily. Save your money. Start weighing your cartridges upon you get notification of these warnings. And use it all the way down to bare minimum. And then again, the, uh, the ounces as far as what's in here and what's left over it's the same for in the other cartridges too 600 milliliters it weighs the same well not well, the ink won't weigh the same but the casing weighs the same and the bag weighs the same everything else after that is just the ink so this works for the other uh, uh cymk colors also and obviously you only have a single cartridge for each one of those so keep track of the weight on those once you get the indicator you can drop down the the weight of it and i mean it's a pain in the ass when you're doing a hundred sheets but say you're doing 10 shirts of one size pop it out weigh it if you think you're getting close down to the weight just keep track of it you're not going to wait i'd rather you see you waste a minute or two popping it out and weighing it than wasting the money of just throwing a cartridge in there arbitrarily so just a tip of the day and i appreciate your time and Want to chat about um, DTF printing? Drop me an email. Um, drop me a message on YouTube. You can join the YouTube group, Volleyball Warehouse. I much appreciate it. Subscribe. Won't cost you anything. I'll be adding more tips and tricks as I'm getting further into this. Um, it's a, not a new channel, but I was doing more training videos and beach volleyball videos uh, ahead of time. So now we're going to get more into the technical equipment stuff as we move along. So appreciate it. Have a great afternoon or evening, whatever time it is by you, and I will talk to you later. Thanks.